All right, so I'm here at my part 107 drone license, commercial drone license exam. I feel like I've studied pretty well and I kind of arrived about 35, 40 minutes early because I'm gonna do a little bit more studying, but hopefully everything goes well. I pass my exam and I will let you guys know in about two hours or so. Okay, so I just finished taking the test and I passed. I got an 88%, super happy with my results. And honestly, I felt that the test was pretty easy. It was pretty straightforward. There was a lot of familiar questions and I kind of recognized them right away, but I made sure to read them through because I wanted to make sure there wasn't any trick questions or they slightly changed the questions to try to you know, get you from memorizing things or you know, whatever. I was really thorough in my studying and typically my studying habits, I tend to overstudy and try to think of every scenario, but there's just too much information. So chances are you're going to see questions that you probably glanced over or you just didn't retain because it really does feel like you're pushing information out to make room for new information. And honestly, they weren't that bad. I just bookmarked them and then went back to them and really read the question slowly, tried to identify what it was actually asking me and then ruled out, you know, the answers, which answers just didn't make sense. But there's two of them that I just did not know. I eliminated the answer that I thought made no sense because there's usually an answer that makes no sense. And then I just took a 50-50 chance on it. So from what I could remember, there was a question that asked like, are you ever permitted to register a foreign drone or foreign unmanned aircraft in the United States? And the answers were something like, yes, if it was for hobby purposes, um, yes, if it was for civil purposes, or no, you were never allowed to register foreign drones in the United States. I just don't remember. I don't remember what the answer was. And then I remember there were some questions that answered other questions in the question. So for example, I noticed that there is a couple of questions where hyperventilation, I already knew the answers to them, but then like literally the next question gives you the definition of hyperventilation. So you can kind of get the answers. But likewise, there is a couple of questions that regarding airspace, like a certain question would ask you to look at some towers and it would put you in like airspace, I don't know, D or something like that. And then two questions later, they will ask you a similar question, but it'll put you in a different direction. And now you're no longer in that airspace. You see what I'm saying? So they're kind of confusing you. They're kind of, they're testing if you are actually using the maps and trying to figure out where you are or memorizing questions and answers and just trying to get through it. So if you weren't careful, you would think, oh, I'm still in airspace B, I need authorization. When in reality, no, you're not. Now you're actually in, I don't know, airspace G or whatever. So just be really careful with the questions, read them thoroughly. Even if it's something that you recognize from a practice exam or whatever, take the time to make sure it hasn't changed and just go through it. I think I finished in total, I think it took me roughly an hour roughly, like I think it was 50 minutes, something like that. But also they actually brought me in 15 minutes late to take the test. There was a lot of people taking tests. They weren't taking necessarily the part 107, but they were taking like electrical exams, nursing exams, whatever. So you're probably gonna get a lot of people with you in the room, but they're not necessarily taking the same test. And the facility was clean. It was a big like computer lab area. There's a bunch of people taking tests, different tests. You have plenty of space. They gave me a calculator. Actually on the exam, there's a digital calculator that you can bring up, but they gave me a physical calculator, scratch piece of paper. They gave me a marker and eraser with a clear um, paper, uh, overhead 
paper for those of you that remember overheads in school. Uh, and that was so I could write in the booklet without actually writing in the booklet. I could erase things. I thought that was pretty cool. And then you also have noise canceling headphones if it's getting too loud for you. Let me show you guys how I studied. And again, I'm very like OCD about studying and I try to like think of every possible scenario. It really was overkill. I spent about a week studying and then once I felt comfortable, I booked my test out. But these are the methods that I used to study. And there's a couple things that I purchased that I thought was well worth it. The first thing that I got, and it was probably one of the most helpful things was, and I think it's also practical because I'm gonna need to utilize it now that I'm licensed, um, was the sectional charts or the FAA VFR sectional charts, whatever you wanna call it, for Los Angeles. And this is the full scale map. You have the legend back here with all of your, you know, information. Open it up. It's the, it's the full blown chart. So this was useful because I was practicing on my own and trying to find certain things in my area. And it was actually pretty neat. Not too expensive. I think I got it off of Amazon for 10 bucks, but you can actually go to anywhere locally next to an airport. Um, usually they'll have an area where you can buy these sectional charts. For example, some of the smaller airports around us, um, they have little offices that you can go to and they'll sell you these kind of things. Okay, now the other thing that I purchased that was really helpful, I highly recommend this. It's actually an FAA Part 107 study guide. It comes laminated. And it's a really cool study guide because it gives you an overview of everything. I actually found this to be a great study guide to reference things or to get a summary of each section quickly. And it's gonna talk about things like airspace and classes of different airspaces. It has a great diagram here that shows you exactly what that looks like not only the air classifications but like the terrain and your visual flight uh rules right and then there's maintenance and pre-flight inspection guides right and then they'll talk about radio communications and how you're supposed to communicate to air traffic control or the letters and what those letters and their code words symbolize and so forth and then it got into things that were a little bit more advanced. This one actually was updated for 2023, I believe. And I think they already came out with the 2024, but I used the 2023 one and it was great. I mean, it talks about stress. It talks about your psychological factors that are affecting your performance. Um, it's gonna talk about things like illness, fatigue, dehydration, heat stroke, the effects of hyperventilating and how to overcome that. And then there's like, vision and flight rules and it goes on and on and then what was really neat that helped me a lot was this weather section that's going to talk about everything related to weather and how clouds are formed and at what altitude dew point um wind wind shear weather fronts ceilings visibility and a really helpful section that helped me on the test greatly was small unmanned aircraft loading, but it also talks about winged aircraft along with rotary aircrafts like, you know, our DJI drones and things like that. And it's gonna specifically tell you what happens when you move your weight around the center of gravity, whether that's aft or whatever. And it gives you good examples of performance impacts and things like that. And it's all summarized. So, you know, before I, went into the test, I looked over this entire thing real quick, skimmed it, and got most of the information refreshers that I needed before taking the test. If you were to only buy this study guide here, and you really read it, you really understood things, and maybe you Googled to get more information on certain subjects that you don't feel comfortable with, and then you did a lot of practice exams, you could pull it off. But I decided to read up on more things along with the study guide. So I use the study guide to really give me a summary and an overview of things once I understood the topic or the subject. So I highly recommend the study guide. I thought it was fantastic. And then let me show you guys how I specifically studied. Tony Northrop has a really old video. Yes, Tony Northrop. It is an old video. It's a bit outdated, but it's still very relevant. There's a lot of great things that he summarizes in his study guide. Now, I think it's a great start. 
It's definitely a great start and watch his video because he, he really gives you a great introduction to all of this and gives you the building blocks to go out and find out more information. So I used his study guide. I don't even have to tell you guys, his channel's way bigger than mine. Go subscribe, you know, show him some support. But um, he goes over some really great things and he summarizes it in a way that helps you remember. So like the temperature um, inversion, what is that? What does that do? Not great visibility, right? But steady air, things like that. And then I added my little notes, right? As I was studying, I added my little notes. And as things were unclear to me or I felt like I was weak on a subject, I went on YouTube channels. One of my weaknesses was controlled air spaces. And I was having a hard time remembering class A, class B, class C, class D, and you know what are those limits and so forth and how to recognize them. So I literally would write out the classes and write out what it meant and memorize these things through applying it, right? And then practicing on the charts and learning it, right? You have to exercise your brain. You have to kind of put the muscles in work or you're just memorizing at that point, right? And the test, definitely tries to test whether you are memorizing information or you actually know how to apply it. I was also really confused by like runways and um, air traffic and which runway, you know, people are gonna, uh, planes are gonna land on. And is it, is it right hand runways or left hand runways and all that, and there's a great video on that. I'll put a link to that as well that helped me understand it. So that's how I studied. I reviewed these study guides got an introduction and then dove deeper on the FAA website or YouTube to understand it more. And once I felt relatively confident, then I started diving into practice exams. And I went on websites, free exams. The things that I missed, I would put them on this Word document, copy the questions, the answers, highlight what the answers are, the correct answers are. And then I would research that question or that subject and understand why the answer is what it is and why the other answers don't work. And I would write my little notes. So it would be engraved in my head. And then I would underline the questions. What is it asking for? What was the trick in the question, right? As I was doing these study guides and I grabbed these questions from various free practice tests on the internet, as I was doing them, I realized one of my biggest issues was airport signs and markings. I didn't know what airport signs and markings meant. There was a couple of questions in the practice exams that came up. So I downloaded this sheet from the FAA and watched a couple of videos and really read on like airport markings and signs and how to like distinguish them, right? Ironically, I don't think I got any questions. I might've gotten the one that was, you know, do not enter, no entry that could happen at intersection runways, but you know, it wasn't as heavy. But here's the thing, I didn't just rely on one or two practice exams because you can do that test a handful of times and the questions will be reordered and you might even see some new fresh questions that you haven't seen before that may stump you. But after doing it maybe four or five times, it's really the same questions over and over again. So if all you're doing is printing out that practice test, then, and reviewing it, then you're just subconsciously, you're memorizing the questions and answers. You're not really learning how to apply it. And they will, the real test will try to trick you to see if you're just memorizing things. They'll change things here and there to, to throw you off. Maybe you're going in one direction on the practice test, well, they'll have you go in a different direction or a shorter distance or whatever to try to trick you. So it's important that you try different free practice tests, if you can find them. And if you can't, then um, maybe even paying for a practice test, but I don't, I don't recommend you do that because there's actually a couple of free things that I'm gonna recommend that you can do that give you a trial period. Um, but try different tests, different practice tests to change the order of things, to stump your mind a little bit, to avoid that memorization that happens unconsciously. There is an app that I used that was fantastic and I ended up downloading it and using it the night before the test. So I actually stayed up really late because this app was so good. And it's called Flight Ready and they give you a free trial, like seven day trial. And I did the 
module where it shows you like, I think it was actually the, the charts. It, it, it takes you through like a lecture and then it does a practice test and then a, a full blown test to understand your knowledge. It was great. And they do charge a hundred bucks or I forget what it was. And I think it's well worth it to be honest if, if, if you need that, if you wanna go down that route. But with the free trial, you're actually able to take their practice test, the full practice test on all the subjects, all the chapters, over and over and over if you want. And it'll even tell you what the answers are and it'll explain why the answer is what it is. It's fantastic. It's amazing that they offer it free for six to seven days or whatever the trial period was. I did that. And honestly, I counted at least three questions that came directly from their practice exam that the night before I wasn't stumped, but I was kind of like, oh, okay, I got it right, but I'm not sure exactly why I got it right. My gut feeling was right, but I want to know why, right? And their explanation, if you click on explanation, tells you exactly, you know, why the answer is what it is. And it just, it stuck to my mind the night before. There's also another free one that's called part 107 exam. And I think that's similar, you have a trial period. So you can do apps, right, to get your practice exams in. So that's basically it, guys. I hope this video was informative. I hope I gave you guys an idea of what I personally did and why it worked. It's really not that bad. The test is not too crazy. Yes, they do try to trick you, but they try to trick you to make sure you're not just memorizing. Overall, I thought the test was very, very fair. It's actually one of the easiest tests that I did. And yes, I did miss some problems. I don't think you're gonna get 100%, to be honest with you. There's always gonna be something in there that it's just too much information, right? You can't retain everything. but. If you do get 100, you know, hats off to you, right? It really was very informative. Like, I'm really proud of it. I feel like I can kind of understand pilot talk now. So that's it for me, guys. I hope you found this video informative, and I will catch you on the next video. Take care, everybody.